So today I'm going to be talking about a problem, which is the collision of a sticky putty with a hanging rod. So the rod is hung by some pivot and I'm taking the mass of the rod to be M and the length of the rod to be L. And the putty is a really small point mass. It's uh, sticky in nature. So it's a ball of clay, for example, and it's coming toward the rod with some speed V naught. And we're going to assume that this picture is drawn just before the collision so it does not have a chance to fall down due to gravity so gravity does act in this problem so the uh, idea is for you to describe the subsequent motion now in layman's terms it's easy to understand what happens this thing's going to come and stick to the rod and then it's going to make the, the force of impact is going to make this whole thing swing out to some angle at which point it will momentarily stop and then presumably swing back down. So it's that final angle that we have to really find in this problem. So let's make that our aim. Now, the one thing you know not to do in a problem involving collision is never to conserve energy. So we'll write that here. never conserve energy during collision. For various reasons, there could be sound, there could be the deformation of the putty. So just to make this problem a little more interesting, I think I'm gonna take the rod to be non-uniform. So let's assume that the rod is hanging down initially, so I'll take the coordinate to be y. So lambda y is a y squared, where the y axis starts getting measured from down there. The putty is moving, as I said, it's very close to the rod, so it's entirely moving in the x direction. So a uh, object of this type actually simulates to a good extent something that's pretty familiar to you, and that's the baseball bat. So you can think of this problem as something like a baseball game being played on a very hot summer afternoon where the ball melts and sticks to the baseball bat and causes the bat to the bat that's held by the batsman at point P to swing out like that. So let's try to solve this problem. If we cannot use energy, then what can we use? For the collision part at least, we need to use have three principles we can use. One is energy, one is linear momentum, and one is angular momentum. How about linear momentum? Can linear momentum be used? Well, the answer to that is unfortunately no, because the moment the putty collides with the rod, the rod's going to feel it. There's going to be a reaction force due to the impact at the pivot. And this reaction force is going to be communicated really quickly from the point of impact. It takes the speed of sound, and the speed of sound through most solid materials is incredibly fast, at least compared to the collision time. So you're definitely not going to be able to conserve momentum, linear momentum. So sum of forces in the x direction is not zero. So linear momentum cannot be conserved. How about angular momentum? That's our only hope. It turns out that angular momentum can be conserved but only about one special axis. You have to be about that axis. Let's see why angular momentum could be conserved if you take your axis of rotation to be this. First of all, the, the reaction force will not contribute because the distance from the reaction force to the pivot is zero. Also, the force of gravity is acting straight down. So that also passes through the pivot. So there's no external torque of any kind. And so we can at least conserve angular momentum for the duration of the impact while the rod is still more or less hanging vertically. Now before we do the angular momentum conservation, let's uh, dispense with the technicalities. I've told you the lambda function. So let's, uh, lambda is by the way dm by dy. That's the definition of lambda. So we can find the mass of the rod. I've already told you the mass is that. So let's try to write it out the integral from 0 to L, lambda of y dy. Lambda of y is a y squared. 
I'll take the a outside because it's a constant. When I integrate y squared, I'm going to get y cubed over 3. So that's going to be a l cubed over 3. The next thing I have to do is calculate the location of the center of mass of the rod. It's increasing in density as you go out. So presumably it lies pretty far down here. I'll call the center of mass location y bar. So let's calculate that. By definition, y bar is the integral of y dm over the integral of dm. That's the definition of the center of mass of a non-uniform rod of anything actually, whether uniform or not. In this case, it's also valid. So that's integral 0 to L. dm already has in it a a y squared. So that's going to be a y cubed dy divided by the mass, which is just L cubed over 3. So A cancels out. The integral of Y cubed is Y to the 4 over 4. So that's going to be L to the 4 over 4 divided by L cubed over 3. And that's 3 quarters L. I have not quite said where the impact occurs, but now that I know where the center of mass is, let me make the impact point a little bit different. The impact occurs, I'll say, at one-thirds the length of the rod, or two-thirds from the top. Okay, the last thing we need to do is find the moment of inertia of this baseball bat, and that can be found. Moment of inertia about the pivot point is just, by definition, y squared dm. So that's the integral of integral from 0 to L, I just have to multiply y squared further. So that's a y to the 4 dy. And uh, that'll be a y to the 5 over 5. So a l to the 5 over 5. Uh, I want to write it in terms of the mass. The mass is right there. But it has a 3 down. So I'll write this as 3 fifths times a l cubed over 3 times L squared. Nothing illegal done. I've given 3 and I've taken 3. So that's going to be 3 fifths ML squared. So that's the result for this particular rod. Now that we know these little technical things about the rod, let's apply the angular momentum conservation principle. The sum of the initial angular momenta about the pivot point P in the Z direction is going to be the sum of the final angular momentum about the Z axis uh, through the pivot point. So that's my notation there. The initial angular momentum is that of a point particle because this putty is a point mass. So that's going to be the linear momentum of the putty times the distance of impact, which is 2 thirds L, times sine of the angle, that's sine 90. So let me just write all that. It's uh, 2 thirds L times little m V naught times sine 90 degrees. And the direction of the angular momentum is R cross P. It's going to be out of the page. And the final angular momentum is also going to be out of the page because the initial angular velocity, omega, after collision is going to be in the counterclockwise direction and counterclockwise is positive per the right hand rule. So this is going to be, just be careful, the moment of inertia is now a combo of both the rod and the putty. So it's going to be the moment of inertia of the rod plus the moment of inertia of the putty, which is a point mass, uh, whose distance is 2 thirds L. So it's a point mass times 2 thirds L squared times omega I won't write it as omega f, I'll call it omega bottom because I want to reserve this f for the final swinging position of the rod. So now let's just substitute the values and make short work of this. It's 2 thirds L times mv naught is equal to ip is 3 fifths ml squared and I sense some fraction addition going to happen here. 4 ninths ml squared omega b. 
So this is a rigid body mo angular momentum I'm using, I omega. So let's just calculate the, actually I noticed that M's cancel out both sides and one factor of L cancels out. I couldn't resist doing that first. So I get two thirds V naught and I'll take this L over here is equal to three fifths plus four ninths omega b and here's where I do the fraction adding it looks like f that 45 can't get it any simpler than that so 9 fives are 45 and then that's going to be 5 nines are so 9 times 3 is 27 plus that's 9 times 5 so that's 5 times 4 20 omega b well here I can make some modest efforts to reduce this denominator. 27 plus 20 is 47. So that's what it is. Omega B is going to be 30 over 47. V naught over L. Observe it has the right units because V naught is meters per second and this is meters so I'm going to get 1 over seconds which is same as radians per second. Because radians is one of those units you can bring into the party if you need it and kick it out if you don't need it. So I get the final angular velocity of the rod at the bottom after collision. Now all that needs to be done is conserve energy from this point onwards. So we have to think about the change in the potential energy though. Uh, each of these things is swinging in a different arc. So the center of gravity of the uh, baseball bat is going up by a certain amount and the center of gravity of the putty is going up by some amount. Uh, but the basic geometry is just the same for both of them and I sometimes like to call it the pendulum geometry. So let's just look at that here. It's just a geometry of a swinging pendulum. So if you have a pendulum of mass m and length l and it's getting a final position like that the height by which the pendulum has swung is what's of interest. And if you look at this trigonometry here, this distance is L cosine theta. So the height is just L minus L cosine theta. So that's really the only piece of information we need, except the L's are different for each of these objects. So the last step let me call this the first step of the problem. Second step of the problem is conserving the energy. So TME at the bottom is going to be TME final, where I'm referring to the final position as, as that. The, the uh, energy is entirely potential at the bottom, so that's going to be uh, kinetic at the bottom. So that's one, one half I sub B plus it's all this stuff I just wrote there plus uh, m times two-thirds L squared omega squared omega B squared and that's equal to the total mechanical energy final it's the mass of the rod times G times the height which is going to be for the rod going to be y bar 1 minus cosine theta and for the putty it's going to be m times g times 2 thirds l times 1 minus cosine theta. So we just need to solve this little algebraic mess. Let's see if we can do this uh, moderately efficiently. So that that's just whatever I did here. So that part should be the same. Fortunately, I saved my work almost entirely, so I can do that. It's going to be, uh, the one thing I did here was divide. I will not do that, so I'll get 47 over 45. And here I cancel this ML squared. I will not do that anymore. Omega B squared, well, that's going to be 30 over 47 squared. V 
B naught squared over L squared, so that's the left hand side. The right hand side is, I can take the mg's out common. I can also take one minus cosine theta out common. So I'm just left with y bar, which by our earlier calculation is three quarters, the length little l, plus two thirds l. So I can cancel out, let me do some house cleaning here. L squared cancel out, the m's cancel out. So, I'm a little bit bothered by the fact that there's an extra factor of L here. Well, actually that's fine because there's a V naught squared. Okay, I was just unnecessarily frightened. So that's one half times 47 over 45, 30 squared over 47 squared. So I can get rid of one of the 47s. And then I have V naught squared is equal to uh, G times one minus cosine theta times, this is another fraction adding enterprise, four threes are 12. So that's three fours are, that's nine plus four eight times L. And this gives us the final angle theta. I mean, I don't want to make a production of this and waste your precious time, but basically this can be solved for theta. You bring everything else that does not involve theta to the other side and you're gonna get, your final answer is gonna have, I'm more con concerned with the units, so let me just make sure because that gave me a little bit of a fright, so let me just make sure the units come out. I'm gonna get V naught squared over G times L. Now if you think about it, the units of um, speed is meter squared per second squared and the units of G are meters per second squared and the units of L are meters, so that comes out to be unitless. And that's really what we're shooting for because the angle theta cannot have any units.